But The Hunt, which is the new film by Thomas Vinterberg, back in the 90s, he established himself on the international scene with Festen, which was a really sort of, you know, tough movie, which is about a hidden legacy of child abuse. And it was which explodes in this, it's called, ironically, you know, at Fest and a Celebration. And it was shot according to the dogma of Hour of Chastity because um, Vinterberg and Lars von Trier were the sort of the architects of the dogma manifesto, which was that thing about stripping away all the mechanics of cinema, handheld, stripped down. And it was, it was always a question about whether it was a prank or whether it was a real thing. But there was there was an underlying aesthetic behind it. What's I was, the vow of chastity? There was, the, the directors had to sign up to, to promise that they, they wouldn't use artificial music, they wouldn't use it, and there's no extraneous action, that they wouldn't take director credit, that everything would be handheld. It was, it was literally drawn up, and he said, I swear to abide to all these things. And then at the end, if you hadn't, you had to sign a confession saying, I actually broke the dogma vow of chastity. I mean, it, it was Danish, you know. Well, it's like that thing, Danish comedy, it's no laughing matter. But that was, you know... It just sounds like authoritarian claptrap. Yes, but it was, exactly, which was why the whole Danish thing... Danish or not. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so he now he's made th this film, which is in many ways the antithesis of Festin, whereas Festin was about this hidden legacy of child abuse. This is the story of a man wrongly accused of child abuse, whose life is torn apart when the community turns on him. And it's the central character is Maz Mikkelsen, who I think is just one of the greatest screen presences of our time. And he was so fabulous in A Royal Affair, which is one of my, you know, my favourite films of the year. It's definitely going to be in my top ten. He's the kindergarten teacher. And essentially, Vinterberg sort of has earned the right to do this story because having, I mean, obviously this is a subject which is very much, you know, in the public air at the moment for various reasons. But Vinterberg having made a film which, you know, on the one hand exposed this horror of hidden child abuse, now makes this film about the the wrongful accusation. And everything about it is different, right down to the style. The Festen was dogma, stripped down, handheld, harsh to look at. This is actually completely the opposite, much more traditional filmmaking, much more lyrical, sort of a, a lush visual style to it in the opening sequence it's called the hunt and it makes a parallel between a hunt and the beginning it's a deer hunt which obviously nods towards nods toward the deer hunter and then Matt Mickelson's character becomes the hunted the hunter becomes the hunted which is obviously a nod towards that but it's shot in a kind of you know lyrical pastoral way that or actually oddly enough even reminded me of that sequence in the queen remember that when Helen Miriam suddenly out there and she sees the stag you know oh you beauty that thing that that moment so it's very very traditional in its filmmaking sense and the, I think what what uh, Vinterberg has decided to do is having shown the other side of the story, he's gone completely the other way and he doesn't want the style to get in the way of the story. The central theme is the way in which a community can turn on people. Again, we get back to this gothic idea. You know, we mentioned this with in terms of great expectations. I mentioned Frankenstein and here, the community turning on somebody who is an innocent man and their life being turned absolutely inside out. It's also about the loss of innocence. It's about the way in which everyone in this horrible situation is victimized, whether it's, you know, the, the, the child who is encouraged in this accusation, uh, whether it's the kindergarten teachers who for very good reason are desperate to protect the children in their care, the parents who are horrified by the suggestion that this thing has happened, and of course Mickelson's teacher himself, whose entire life is destroyed, largely because he got on well with the kids that he teaches. And I thought it was a really well-made film dealing with a, a very, very difficult subject. I'd like to say if people... Are, you know, are interested in Vinterberg, you know, go back through his back catalogue, look at things like Dear Wendy, because the fact of the matter is that he's, you know, people remember Festen and this, and there has there have been movies in between which have kind of got lost in the mix. But Mass Mickelson is so good, and it's a very, very intelligent, and I think, you know, an important film, and deals with a difficult subject matter and deals with it very well.